Welcome. Here we are at the uh, world famous Roth Conference down in Dana Point, California. I am sitting here with Caesar Johnston from Energis Corporation, is the CEO and president of the company. Tell us a little bit about the business, what you guys are doing, uh, the part of the market that you're going after now. So, good morning, Chris. Thank you for the invitation. There's a systematic evolution that we're going through as a company, uh, and we are now mainly focused on IoT devices. And that will have a roadmap and, and we'll eventually get there as time goes by. Okay. And when you say an IoT device, just so the audience can right. understand, if just in case they don't know, give us give us a little bit of a, a background what that means and an example of how this is, you know, you envision this being implemented into the market. Yeah. So typically when people talk about IoT, we talk about Internet of Things. And when we say Internet of Things, that means multiple things to different people. In general, it is about finding devices, finding uh, end, uh, points that have communication capabilities where you want to be able to gather the, that information and be able to track uh, life and be able to sense your environment. So in our particular case, when we say IoT, we're very focused on three particular markets and with one of them kind of de-emphasizing uh, lately, but uh, mainly RF tags, uh, being able to look at the next generation of uh, radio frequency tags similar to RFID, because RFID is more of a first generation technology. Uh, we're looking at sensors, being able to look at temperature, being able to look at humidity, being able to sense the environment and, and motion, uh, see people with motion sensors and, and so on, be able to pick up light intensity and so on. And uh, we're also looking at electronic shift labels, which are displays. And all of these IoT devices that we're looking at do not have any batteries or, or attachment, cable attachment to actually get the power. So no need to plug it in, no need for a battery. You're just sending electricity to these devices over the air? That's pretty much, in, in a way, to look at it. We energize the room. Communication devices fill up rooms with data. We fill up rooms with energy. Wow. And we do that with specific transmitters that we have invented and developed technology for, semiconductors and antenna technology. And on those receivers, what we do is we take the RF signal that is energized around the room and we convert that signal into, through rectification, into effect, effectively a DC signal that can now power those devices without battery. That's just amazing. That's fascinating. So really. in, in rudimentary terms, uh, it would almost be like a, a cell phone uh, receiving a signal, right? Uh, but in a different technology, but it's transmitting over the air to the device. Yeah, and again, cell cell phones, I want to get away from it because I don't want to be okay. trying to confuse people. With right, it. right. These are IoT devices that, uh, for instance, at home you might have a temperature sensor mm -hmm. and your sensor might have a little battery. We remove those batteries and we put in our antenna and our rectification technology. We deploy our transmitters so we end up their own and that's how we power it. But now, now the market for you is really the larger industrial kind of supply chain area that's is that where you're going there there are there are three applications as i said before rf tax sensors and esl and there are about four different markets that we're looking at that includes industrial medical retail as well as smart smart home smart office and all those markets together you're talking about over 740 billion dollars or so of total addressable market wow that we can gather just with that uh, iot focus that we have today. And we're focused on that because that's how this technology is going to emerge over time and eventually power other much uh, high uh, level power devices. Now, how how fast can something be can something be charged? <laughs> like, or is it in real time or is it charging a battery in the device? Uh, it's both. Okay. Uh, it depends on the application. It depends on the user. Certainly, uh, when we look at our, our RF tags, they have no batteries, so it's really real time, and it's one transmitter to multiple or many devices at the same time because we the whole room is energized. And there are some devices that might need some rechargeable batteries because they might they might need let's say overnight recharge to be able to actually uh, send more information than needed. So it's a matter of what applications you do. In the case of RF tags, those are batteryless. In the case of some sensors. Uh, for instance, uh, CO2 sensors, they might need a little backup battery. But here's the beauty of it, that while we use rechargeable batteries, we do not use disposable batteries. And you know that disposable batteries are really, really bad for the environment. 
So we're also helping here, the environment, making it green as much as possible. And what's the uh, amount of power at this point that can be transmitted to a device through this uh, process? So, so, so that's a very good question, and it's not a straight answer. Uh, maybe the way I can put it with, to you is the following. If you have plenty of water in your house, you would not put it into a tank. If you don't have enough water, you put it into a tank, right? Mm -hmm. So you've seen that you go to other countries that don't have availability of water, you fill that with tanks. So in our particular case, the tank is the battery, the water is the energy. Uh, it's a matter of how much water you need at a given time. So the amount of power that you need is, is an instantaneous requirement. So your, your tank, your battery might actually have more than you need at a given time. But in our particular case, in the case of our tax, is pretty much uh, we, we're charging those tax every sometimes 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And that's more than needed. That's, that's, a, that's a response that is really, really high in general. And this is at 15 meters of distance. So that's how far it can go, 15 meters. Correct. And, and those devices, the, the original hub where the, where the electricity is being sent from or the signal mm -hmm. is being sent from, Definitely. that's plugged in. Uh, into the uh, conventional uh, power source, where it could be solar or battery in itself, right? It, it, could, it could be. In general, we use AC uh, power, in, and that power gets converted using our transmitters that we call power bridges. And we have a roadmap for those power bridges. Uh, we have one watt conducted power, two watt conducted power today, which is good enough for the IoT devices that uh, we're looking at. And we have a tremendous roadmap which is uh, approved by the FCC. We're the only company pretty much in the world that has permission to send up to 15 watts of power. So we're not letting your room. We have a tremendous technology roadmap that we're going to fill up over time. Certainly our focus today is to develop those markets, generate revenue, and then start going towards those 15 watts. Current cuts, could you charge, I mean, could you feed enough electricity to something that needed 15 watts uh, at one time? Or is that to be distributed across multiple it, devices? It's, it's to be distributed across, depending on the type of antenna that you use. But the effectiveness of the system now becomes the number of receivers over the translator. So it becomes pretty significant. And you guys have 200 patents. Over 200 patents. Over 200 patents. When when did you start filing these patents? And and what's the, what do you think that the... Uh, the library of patents cover and sure. and and there's a lot of value in that out oh definitely when we started the company uh we could only legally around the world send power to no more than half a millimeter there was no given uh, certification path in able to send power there was a lot of doubt and i would say uh not knowledge of wireless technology and people had those hers and in fact, many people looked at us and felt that this could not be achieved because Tesla tried that hundred years ago and Tesla could not make it. Well, uh, here we are today. Uh, we open up the markets around the world. We open up all the certifications, not just in the U.S. with the FTC. In Europe, we, we uh, contributed to all the HC um, standards. We have, uh, we have certification pretty much all over the world for our one watt system. And we created, we opened up part 18 to go below, beyond half a millimeter. So we are, the, we are the only company that has transmitters that are fully certified and qualified to be installed pretty much everywhere in the world did that. And that's through these two other patents. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, now to answer your question more specifically, you asked me about the types of patents that we have. We have fundamental patents on, on how to send and, and uh, convert powers up to RF signals, how to uh, take that information, that, take that energy and convert that into DC power. We have an outbound communication channel that has a specific messages that we, we control and we use. We have patents on chips, which is <clears throat> fundamentally important. Uh, we are the only company that has a specific semiconductors for this type of technology. We have uh, microarchitecture and as well as architecture uh, patents. We have systems patents. We have certification patents. So pretty much all the patents encompass uh, every possible set, uh, part of the technology that is needed to actually make this happen. And those companies that want to look at us, they have to look at us as the the leader and if they're interested in licensing, they can always talk to us and we can help because we, we need to really uh, grow this, this market, right? And we're a small company and we're looking for people that can work with us. Yeah, so you need to educate. That's you, right. you need to educate. There needs to be an economic 
benefit for the company that's going to implement, right? So it need, right. they need to see a value in implementing this technology right. in order right. to accelerate the adoption. Because um, while some people will do it for the environmental reasons, most people are going to do it for the financial benefit at first, right? And if they could see, they don't need to install plugs all over a, a correct place and all of a sudden you're you know you have a benefit of doing that it, in fact uh, iot has a tremendous challenge which is called the battery mm -hmm. and the placement of those iot devices today is pretty tough we pretty much free and give mobility to iot devices and hey, if you if you could look forward you know in the in, in your dream world in this technology mm -hmm. Uh, what, what does that look like? What is, sure. you know, where's it being implemented? H how's it being used? What so, the, what's the dream? So, so we develop the technology. We have the patents. We have the certification as a company that developed a, a fundamental technology and proof that it's possible to do this type of transmission. We also have a tremendous challenge and that challenge is we also have to create and open up markets where we add value to our customers. To that extent, uh, we today have in less than two years or 30 trials with uh, potential customers that have already deployed and we have installed a number of, let's say, uh, warehouses and, and, and stores and areas that are fully energized and are using our, our RF tags and some of our sensors. So do you envision a day though where people are, every home in the world has this? I mean, I'm the dream. Okay, so the, like, the, the, the dream, the long-term dream. So if you look at my background, I worked on Wi-Fi for 25 years. When I started working on Wi-Fi, a lot of people said that uh, that thing wasn't going to go more than two meters. Uh, today, everybody wants Wi-Fi. So I was behind that for two generations. All right. So the dream is pretty much the same. You will have it everywhere, anytime. So hold on, let's go there for a second. Let's go back to your Wi-Fi background. Sure. Tell us about that. When, where was Wi-Fi when you, when you started? That's right. And, and, and what was your role involved in that sure. process? So I started in 1995, uh, when Wi-Fi was not called Wi-Fi, it was called wireless LAN. Mm -hmm. At the time, the, the, the standards itself would only uh, send one megabit per, uh, per second of data. Mm -hmm. I was working at ABC Research, and we were doing multimedia voice data and, and uh, video at 25 megabits per second, 25 times more than people could do. So we show that uh, we were involved in the OFDM, which eventually became 64G. I was lucky to work with a company that developed MIMO, which is pretty much the fundamental technology that allows you to have multiple antennas and take advantage of that. So I ended up working for Broadcom, and I brought them, I was the, in charge of all the development of all the semiconductors. So 54G was owned by my team, uh, wireless combos, Multiple technologies was owned by my team. Uh, we enabled large companies you know, all over the place. Then I left and then moved to Marvell, and I also ran all wireless connectivity, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and so on. So it was just a natural progression for me personally in my career to go to wireless energy because those two are going to merge together. And as you said, the dream is that it will just come together and, and it will be everywhere. So in that in that scenario, every every mesh router has. In your dream, for it has this technology built over time, it would be built in. In fact, today our power bridges, believe it or not, they have not only have power, but they also have communications. And we use BLE. There's no reason why Wi Fi or 5G should not be there. And it's already integrated. So, a power wow. bridge is the next generation access point, if you want to put it that way. Well, world changing technology. If what happened in uh, your career with Wi Fi happens in power, we are going to be seeing a, a different world. Uh, it'll certainly save me a lot of money on all the times I've forgotten my charger on a business trip. So uh, I think that uh, this is fascinating, and I look forward to the day that this is uh, implemented in, in every router, and I wish you the best of luck along the way. Uh, stock symbol W-A-T-T, Energist Corporation. Thank you very much. See you very much. It'll happen. I've seen it before, so I always have it again. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you.